busy out here working all day and I thought I would bring you along and show you some progress and give you a September garden tour but right now I want to show you um, my monarchs and their progress so it's really really fascinating to watch I'm learning as much as I can um, because we're not really doing anything to like really encourage this to happening we're just responding to nature and I wish I would have got out here a second sooner because he was actually eating the head and you can see I'll show you um, this is the top of a milk, tropical milkweed seed pod, and that's how you harvest, you, you we're going to harvest seed from there eventually on the other plant. But this guy was munching away, I really wanted to get some close-up action of him eating because it was really fascinating. Um, I don't really know what he's doing now, he's probably moving on to his next meal, but he got really, really big overnight. Um, Look at this. To see all of this up close, I think, is something that's worth watching. And I'm really hoping, you know, as we go through just the epiphany of what the garden is all about and the life of these garden insects that we rely on so much. Oh, look, he's turning around. Maybe he'll go back to the milkweed uh, seed pod and start eating that. It's critical that we offer these creatures what they need. And we're learning on a crash course what it is that the monarch butterfly needs to uh, lay its eggs on what it needs to eat, what type of nectars they need, and then what type of leaves they need to feed on to survive before the metamorphosis begins into a chrysalis and then they become a butterfly. So, you know, I don't really understand all of it. I don't know what this guy is doing. Lots of interesting movements that they make, but this is really just incredible. This guy here is doing the same thing with, with the tapping. I don't, I don't understand what this tapping means but it's just really interesting. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm so, I'm so afraid now that I'm going to miss them becoming a chrysalis. I, I don't want to miss that stage. I'm hoping that that will happen right here and that we'll all be able to witness it together. So fascinating. Look at their little antennas or whatever these things are. I have so much to learn and I'm, I, I'm so excited to learn it. And I'm just so pleased and, and I feel just, you know, to know that I'm, I'm not having to put in like any extra work and that this is happening right in front of me naturally and that it, it's, it's nurturing itself here just because I planted a tropical milkweed. So look at this guy over here climbing away. Let me find him in the viewfinder. How fascinating, the life of a butterfly and the life of a caterpillar. You know, I want to consider myself a butterfly mom and a caterpillar mom, but I don't think I really am. I mean, they're here, I'm here, we're trying to live in harmony. They're doing what they're doing, and I'm, I'm trying to learn from it, I'm trying to share it with you. And through this process, I want to encourage and motivate you to learn what the meaning of this creature is on our earth. And why you should consider growing a garden, even if it's something small. These guys need food if we want them to pollinate our gardens and without flowers and the, and the right things for them to eat, we're not going to have the butterfly population. So this is all really, really super important. This morning we came out to literally dozens and dozens and dozens of butterflies. 
I guess they're going through some sort of a mating process because all the little skippers are flying around in swarms with each other. And it's just amazing to see so many of them moving together at the same time and then landing on our flowers. And today they were actually landing on me this morning while we were standing here. Really just amazing. wild garden and I always say in, in its lush state right now it is so beautiful to me when it's a little bit wild and even though I'm coming back here and I'm being annihilated with mosquitoes and all sorts of stuff that's biting me the pollinators um, you know kind of take my mind off of it and being in here in this beautiful bed of flowers while everything is growing it's just you know you deal with it and everything just sort of goes away but something I wanted to show you starting here at the tomatoes these are all Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes now granted our temperatures dropped down into the 50s overnight it was so chilly out here this morning but it was so beautiful um, we have all of these Kellogg's breakfast which really took their time these are in the 90 day range and of course I started these back in March and we brought them out into the garden um, the second week of May around Mother's Day and now we you know we did have a few that were so delicious they were my favorite tomato now they're showing up and there's going to be a ton so we will be eating tomatoes for some time the parks whoppers totally rebounded now look I have tomatoes and I have blossoms all the way up at the top now I don't know what's going to happen with these blossoms with this heat that's about to come but all of these tomato babies that are growing up there we're gonna to have tomatoes for a while. The park swappers always do this. I just have to be careful because they are going to fall down, so I'm going to have to be ready to offer them a little bit more support as they as they fall down. But some of these tomatoes are really nice and big. And I mean, even this park swapper on this side was totally dead. It came back and now it's producing tomatoes. So that, you know, is always just incredible. I'm actually having to walk around some of these flowers because they're all throwing seeds, you know, like all of these beautiful apricot lemonade cosmos have seed heads all over them and I keep knocking them off onto the ground so I have to harvest seeds. Um, but the next tomato um, that is sitting next to the Parks Whoppers is the Brandywine. And you know, this started off rough, it was very blighty. Look, it just wants to hang down, there's suckers everywhere. Um, uh, it was very blighty plant and it took its time, but when it produces a tomato, they are so incredible. Um, and there's clusters of them in here. It's finding its way to support itself and everything's very messy right now, but some of this stuff like just came on us so quick. Um, but they are really producing big giant tomatoes. The next tomato that did really, really well and is coming back and we just have tons, tons and tons of giant tomatoes on these vines is the classic beef. Um, we really love this tomato. We've had many through the season and I will continue to grow classic beef now that I know what they need. Um, this area over here was Abe Lincoln and Abe Lincoln didn't really show up too much this year. Um, it's an impressive plant as far as canopy and structure and it gives you a lot of vines but not a lot of fruit. Now, right now I have a couple of big giant ones up there so um, I'm hoping to taste them so I can decide whether or not they're going to earn a place in the 2024 garden. Um, Hungarian heart, I have to show you what I harvested today still as I work through the jungle. These are every bit of a giant fruit that they claim to be. Um, I have had so many Hungarian hearts and these are so good because you can slice them down for salad, you can make sandwiches, you can cook them for sauces and gravies. Very versatile tomato, very much like an Amish paste. Um, now the next tomato that is doing really incredible is the Jersey Devil. And I have harvested so many tomatoes from this plant. They roast beautifully. Um, oh my gosh, they're all meat, very little seeds. They make a wonderful, a true paste. Um, and look, I mean, if these make it through the season without a frost, if I can just get, you know, a little bit of blush on them, there's 
dozens and dozens and dozens of Jersey Devil paste tomatoes here. And the vine is doing good. I mean, it just needs more support and we'll get into that later, but there's going to be um, a lot of changes for next year. So if you're not subscribed to our channel, you might want to get ready to subscribe, you guys, because we're going to have content all year long. So this is the uh, area where I always grow Amish paste. Now, I don't know what's going on, but we have more fruit for the first week of September. Like, it just came out of nowhere. I mean, and there's so many tomatoes on here. And I have a basket full that I pulled today that are all fully ripe. So this is just, you know, it's just so amazing. And then on this side, I have um, San Marzano from San Marzano Lungo 2. And this was from Baker's Creek, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And I don't even see that as an option anymore. Maybe it's there and I've just missed it. But this actually yielded two different kinds of tomato in its pack. So you're getting something that looked like an abruzzi pear with it. Um, and that has finally died out. But we have a ton of tomatoes, so I'll be making tomato gravy for many more weeks to come. There goes Farmer John. We've been at it for a few days, building a walkway and uh, trying to improve the backyard to a place where it's more manageable for us as we age. So this is all really important stuff to us. I sowed some Blue Lake bush beans over here and sort of forgot about them. And I, have, uh, I did a whole harvest this morning beautiful healthy beans so they're now showing up again for a second round i have some leeks over here that we'll be transplanting excuse me i'm sorry and uh over here my cucumber plants that decided that they were you know every, all of the cucumber plants bit the dust you guys as well as so many other people today i harvested a bunch of cucumbers and um look i have flowers and healthy leaves so something's changing and I have to pay attention to what's going on with this new, you know, autumn climate for us because now the garden is doing things in September that it doesn't really normally produce like this. Normally when the cucumber plants are done, they're done. But it was like they were waiting. These zinnias are literally from four seeds. Two on this side and two on this side. Zinnias, the gift that keeps on giving. Look at, the, look at the colors and the little butterflies. They just love it. Now the butterflies are so important and we, we wanna attract them with these brightly colored flowers because after they get their nectar from these flowers, they go over and they pollinate the cucumbers. Very, very important to have flowers mixed in with your vegetable garden. Now I'm just standing on the other side of the giant tomato trellis. <laughs> Look at all of the classic beef tomatoes. There are so many. I am amazed. And they're gigantic tomatoes. Gigantic brandy wines. I mean, oh, this is just so incredible. The last of the two Roma tomatoes are still wanting to produce a canopy. They're coming back um, and there's actually blossoms on them, but as far as I'm concerned, um, I've taken, you know, all that I need to harvest from the Romas and it's probably not worth it for me to hold on to these plants any longer because of the maintenance. So I'm just going to be grateful and say thank you and then we're going to put them to rest for the season. Now one of the most incredible things that have happened this year uh, was with regard to our, our peppers. I did make a few videos that I can attach and links below in the description of, you know, I, I started my own peppers from seed. Um, I transplanted them and we showed that process and then we showed them growing and they were beautiful healthy peppers and then we we lost them we we were getting ready to pull all of the pepper plants but you know my patience kicked in and I said hang on let's wait a minute let me just think about this and then I did another video where I showed you how I brought them back to life you might want to go back and watch that video because it truly works so I'm going to show you the pepper plants now and I am so 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 happy and grateful so I'm going to start with my nottepenos and this plant these plants you guys well there's more than one plant in there there's many um they were down to, to stems and they lost their canopy they they were not producing any more leaves at all it was terrible but now not only do i have a whole new fresh canopy i have fruits blooming um i have pulled off and they're turning mature very rapidly 
So today I had a big harvest of natapenos and the same thing is happening with the shishitos. This type of pepper grows very quickly um, and a lot of people are asking as they watch our videos that you know they're not familiar with thin walled peppers with no heat or just mild heat. Shishito peppers and natapeno peppers are so worth growing. They grow well together in the same bed. They freeze well, they store well, they stand well on the counter, and they're just most delicious. Simply pan blistered with some olive oil and some sea salt, and they're addictive like potato chips. That is the best way that I can describe them. But peppers like this are so good for you because they're full of um, niacin and vitamin C and um, they're so satisfying in your belly. They're just very, very filling. They're a wonderful side dish. Look at these, really gorgeous. Now soon they will start to crack and wrinkle up a little bit and they'll be full of flavor. And uh, it's just really, really exciting what happened with my shishitos and my natapenos because these are really some of my favorite peppers to grow. Now over here I have Keystone Resistant which last year they grew incredible amounts of peppers and these every pepper start suffered from the same thing. Now, not only do I have little baby peppers, but we have uh, little buds everywhere. There's flowers forming. So in this bed is mostly Keystone resistant, one Jimmy Nardello's, which is also rebounding, and then the California Golden Wonder, which was the only pepper that I bought from the farm stand had some black spot when it came, it had uh, looked a little bit um, stunted, and now it's finally showing up. So we have um, some flowers. Where's the other plant? I just watered everything, so they're hanging down a little bit, but yep, there it is. Lots of flowers, and they, they want to grow back. And this set of, this canopy here, these leaves look really, really good. So they're, once they start to produce to this level where you see the flower and then the little tiny buds happen, you get um, a harvest rather quickly. So pretty excited. There goes a little Jimmy Nardello's. And then over here, the only thing that's really still not producing yet is my giant Marconi. Another favorite of mine. Everything that I grow is my favorite. There's not a lot of stuff that's an experiment here in our backyard garden. Um, but look, promising, I have a flower on the giant Marconi. Normally these grow and grow and grow and they're all over the counter, they're all over the freezer, they're all over, we're cooking and eating peppers every single day. So I'm waiting for them, but I haven't going to keep the faith. I think I will still have some giant Marconis. Um, this area of Jimmy Nardello's is producing flowers. Um, I have peppers growing. And then over here, I have the Cubanea or Cubanel, which some people call it. Um, and I just harvested all of the bigger ones off of here today, but these totally came back as well. Now there's really so much more to see and there's so many projects that we're working on, but I realize that my videos tend to get a little long because we have a lot of content to cover. So now that I've um, I have my hands in just about everything in this garden today and Farmer John's been bent over for two days, we moved several tons of stone yesterday. Well, he moved it, I drove. So um, we have more going on with that, with the materials that we bought. And uh, there's lots to see here. So if this is your first time stopping here and I didn't introduce myself yet, my name is Lee and you'll see Farmer John floating around through the area. Uh, this is our backyard garden and we do garden content and lifestyle, some how-to stuff. We build things and you guys who have been here with us, you know what we do. So we're still trying to find our way to some extent, you guys, but you know what? We all grow together and there's so much that we can learn together. So it doesn't always have to be about one thing. It's meeting people through the power of the internet and wonderful YouTube. And you find somebody that you like and you find somebody that you can connect to. And the most important thing when you meet someone from a channel like Our Backyard Garden on YouTube, it's that you meet people that you can trust. And you know, we're not here to try to sell you anything. We're not here to try to convince you to join us on Patreon or pay us or this is what we do. We're here to share and inspire. We really truly believe that there's a message for everyone to hear and what it is that you can learn um, in the awakening of becoming a gardener. So 
We hope you'll stay with us. If you subscribe to our channel, please hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. And we hope to hear from you guys in the comments. So I'll see you guys hopefully in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.